Neighborhood Watch presents For the Record, brought to you by Ill Remedy Studios. We are your hosts. I am Bonnie Blue. And I am Phoenix, and we're live in the studio with House Shoes. What's good, y'all? What's up, man? It's a pleasure having you. It's good to get here, man. Finally, we figured it out. So, um, go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, and uh, let's talk about the early days. Um, <clears throat> from Detroit to LA, um, you becoming a beat maker, all that good stuff. All right. Oh, man. It was a long fucking story. Let's abbreviate this shit. Uh, Hip-hop motherfucker since I heard it the first time. Uh, Went to college for a very brief moment. Very brief. And I got kicked out of... uh, I got kicked out for arson. Yeah. Took all the money that was left, bought records with it, started DJing. Uh... Was was gracefully, uh, you know, accepted by the hip hop scene in Detroit and allowed to do my thing for a long time. Always uh, for the right reasons, you know what I mean. And uh, I just always use my platform to bang out the shit that I fuck with. I never played ball. I feel as a DJ, the most corniest shit is to learn how to play for the room. I think great DJs clear rooms. You know what I mean? It's a lot of fear. People are scared to do what the fuck they want to do. That's kind of what I'm an advocate about, just period. Doing what the fuck you got to do. Being the best version of yourself. You know what I mean? And I've been blessed. Traveling the world. Playing the shit that I like to fuck with. That's right. You know what I mean? You're definitely a dope DJ. You've made a major impact in LA and around the world. Um, talk to us a little bit more about uh, Street Corner Music. Uh, Street Corner Music is a record shop that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that I worked at uh, in the early '90s, like '94. I actually went up there to buy Hard to Earn the day it came out, and from there built a relationship, started working there. And, Street Corner Music uh, was the first record store that allowed me to be uh, responsible for ordering records, like spending their money, you know, on shit that I wanted people to fuck with in the shop. So fast forward, whatever, 15, 20 years later, when I decided to get back into this record shit for real, uh, I was really stuck on what what the fuck the name of the shit was going to be. And it just clicked one day, like Street Corner Music. That was the first place that had faith in me to kind of, you know, raise people's ears. So six years since then, I put out like 65 records, almost, maybe some more. If I hear some shit that, you, you know, that touches my soul, I want that shit to touch everybody else. We put it on plastic, you know what I mean? The only goal of the label is really, uh, existence you know what i mean it's not about you know conversations at top 10 lists or any of that bullshit i hear some shit that i like we put it on a record and it's gonna stick around who would you say were some of your mentors during the time that you were coming up as a producer and a dj and that really helped you propel forward in your career oh man the homie spot and beach uh, Beach was on Welcome to Detroit. Uh, they used to make beats on a four track. They would let me borrow the four track and this little battery powered sampler. And I would just fuck around. And uh, it ended up being something special. Of course, JD, you know what I mean? Jay used to help me make beats in the basement on the SB1200 and the 950 before he got off on the 3000. That was a blessing. Like He just had me dig through the records and pull some shit out. <clears throat> he'd chop it up for me, set it up on the SP, and then he would leave and go to the titty bar, you know, and never come back. And I'd be in my dude's basement until like, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning. Like, I would leave and lock up. So, yeah, my man DJ Dez, Andres, big influence. Those are the main ones. You know what I mean? What's some of the craziest experiences you've had traveling around the world, rocking shows? 
Man, just seeing people from the whole other side of the world knowing every word of the homie shit. And running into the homies <laughs> on the whole other side of the world. The first show I really ever had overseas, I was filling in DJing for Slum Village. Uh, my man Dez was, was their DJ, and he was on tour with Moody Man. And... We're driving in the back roads to this festival, and I'm looking through the the tour like program for the festival, and I see that Moody Man's on the tour is on on the uh, festival as well. So we pull up backstage. Moody Man walks out. Dez walks out. Another Detroit homie walks out. Another Detroit homie walks out. By the time it was all said and done, it was like 14 of the homies on the whole other side of the world. You know what I mean? Like. That shit is special. You know what I mean? What's your favorite place that you've been? Man, I like Austria. Vienna, Austria. Well, my favorite place in the world is New Zealand. <clears throat> Definitely New Zealand. Auckland. Favorite spot. But Vienna is the shit for another reason. Just because when you travel, hospitality is real important. And the best promoter I've ever dealt with in any of this shit, he's since retired, but... The homie Klaus, who actually just recently moved to L.A. and is like a wine dealer now. It's crazy. Uh, I was like, why the fuck would you want to move here? Um, he would pick me up from the airport. It would be like a quarter ounce for the best weed in Austria in the back seat. Two fits of Hennessy. We would go to a Brazilian steakhouse. It would be like a $700 dinner. And from that, you know... I think I've played in Vienna like four times. And I want to say I played for four hours, five hours, six and a half hours, and eight hours. My DJ sets, the length of my, like, you know what I mean? Hospitality breeds that, you know what I mean? Like, motherfucker treats you good. You're in a great mood. It's great people in the crowd. Fuck it. Let's keep going. It's not like I'm around the corner. I'm in fucking Vienna. Let's fucking party. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Speaking of, uh, you were featured in the Netflix documentary, The Evolution of Hip Hop. Oh yeah, Hip Hop Evolution. Yeah. Speak to being um, involved in that and then also what you've seen over the years, some of the biggest changes that you've seen in the industry and in the hip hop community. I mean, it's a blessing to be involved. You know what I mean? I got the call. I was like, absolutely. Let's do it. It's funny, after the fact, when it dropped, I went back to Detroit, and there was a lot of complaints. Uh, the homie got cut out. This got cut short. Duh, duh, duh. But I had, to, I had to kind of bang on the homies. Like, listen, they did an episode. They did a singular episode on the pushback of the commercialization of hip-hop, and they featured three markets. They featured fucking New York, L.A., and guess who the fuck else they featured? They featured Detroit. We have never had any documentation. Y'all motherfuckers got to understand that you got as much face time as our parents in this bitch. You know what I mean? We're a product of L.A. and New York. So I had to give them that perspective. Uh, what was the other thing? What I've seen? Or what? Yeah, just just the evolution of hip-hop that uh, you've seen, just being involved in it for yeah, so know, many I mean, years it's, now. It's a lot easier now. There's definitely a, uh, more great music probably available available at a singular time than there's ever been before. But there's, you know, just as much terrible shit. This shit's been fucked up for a long time. I remember, like, the first... When I first saw the change, that shit was 25 years ago. Like, y'all couldn't even wrap your head around that. It was... I remember the Friday, too. It was a Friday at St. Andrew's Hall. That's where I DJed every Friday in St. Andrew's. That was our church for the shit. And it was like the third Friday in May of 1996. And I could not tell you exactly what it was, but ever since that night, there's something that hasn't been there. You know what I mean? Like that original chemistry. You know, I'm a white motherfucker, but... We, I've been DJing a spot for like five years at a certain point in time. And you look up and you see an all-white crowd. And you're like, oh, man, this shit's kind of corny. You know what I mean? Like, real shit. 
shit changed, but it got reined back in. In the last 10 years, the real shit has come back. It's a lot of copycat motherfuckers. It's always a lot of copycat motherfuckers, though. You know what I mean? Of course. What's on your plate for 2020? Too many records. Too many records. I'm trying to do 100 records on Street Corner Music, and it's over with. And then I'm going to do something else 100 times. And then I'm going to do something else after that 100 times. That's my goal. You know what I mean? I try, I try, to, try to lead by example. We done th- plenty 10,000 hours. You know what I mean? Let's try to be the best example. Make be, people be the best example of themselves. You know what I mean? People look at me like I'm, a, I'm an asshole, but I'm just honest. So if you feel I'm an asshole because I'm honest, what type of people you got around you? You know what I mean? All right. So uh. speaking of assholes and in your case, speaking of keeping it very real, yeah, it's what we uh, do. you've said some things on Twitter about a certain asshole and <laughs> all the time, uh, potentially have gotten yourself into some interesting situations and possibly a little bit of trouble, but mm. whatever it was made for a great story. So go ahead and tell us, tell us about that. Not necessarily trouble. Just, you know, once again, being the best example, of the, you know, I'm a hundred percent at all times. And uh, <laughs> it was a situation that went down that I kind of blacked out on some Trump shit, and I said, fire on, like, fire on all them red hat bitches or something like that. I blacked out. I was I was upset. And, you know, uh, apparently white America doesn't understand that firing on somebody means punching them in their face. It doesn't mean, like, shooting them from the top of buildings with high-powered rifles. You know what I mean? So the shit popped off a little bit. It was on like fucking Fox News and CNN and this fucking article on Infowars about me. They called me a verified leftist because I have a blue check on Twitter, which oddly enough, they have since changed the checks on Twitter. They're white now, oh, shit. which is fucking really interesting. But anyway, uh, I came home from the record shop one day on a Monday and it was a business card in the door from... Uh, Major Crimes, LAPD. And they said, like, you know, we got some questions for you. Hit us up. We're going to chop it up. So the next morning, I woke up and I had my Irish coffee. Smoked my little joint, you know what I mean? A little half a joint. And I was kind of faded. So I was like, let me take a shower real quick. And then we'll call these motherfuckers and see what's going on. I'm walking through the living room. Knock, knock, knock. What's up, Major Crimes? We talk in the hallway for about 15 minutes, maybe 12. And, you know, basically the the, the whole entire conversation uh, equated to, did you really mean you wanted to kill everybody? And I was like, no, I did, really didn't mean I wanted to kill everybody. You know, y'all know what firing on somebody was means, you know, and they're like, of course we know what that shit means. So they leave the next day at the same time in the morning, knock, 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 FBI. What's up, fellas? homies were just here yesterday let's let's chop it up let's talk about it you know what I mean they come in they want to sit at the dinner table I'm like nah we'll go outside I'll smoke cigarettes while we talking shit same conversation almost to a T same length same content they leave Thursday nobody comes I get a day off Friday same time get that knock and I swear to God I was walking through the living room and I'm like Major crimes, FBI. I'm like, is this is fucking Secret Service about to be on the other side of this door. And I answered the door and they got their shit out, you know what I mean? Like the movies. And I'm like, man, just come in, y'all. I've seen all the homies this week. Let's talk about it. So we talked for about five minutes and they're like, we ain't here about that Twitter shit. We're here about this record you put out with Donald Trump dead on the cover of it, <laughs> <laughs> which I did release. Uh, Conway the Machine 12 inch, Rev Shines. And uh, it's hilarious. I had the record on the shelf. I pulled it off the shelf. I was like, this record right here sold out quicker than anything I've ever released in 25 years of putting records out. And I look at him and I'm like, your boss is a cocksucker, man. (laughs) Straight up. All my kids. You know what I mean? And their response almost immediately was, we can't discuss our personal opinions. You know what I mean? But watch this, though. Then the conversation gets a little pointed. What's your history? And I tell basically the same story I told y'all. You know what I mean? 
Got kicked out of school. Started. I bought a bunch of records. Started DJing, putting out records. And I tell him, I'm like, you know, I don't know if y'all ever heard of Jay Dilla. You know what I mean? That was the big homie. I, the first record I ever put out was one of his early records. And the Secret Service agent. It was two of them. One of them goes. Wait, 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 wait. You put out one of Jay Dilla's first records? <laughs> like, homie was hip. You know what I mean? I pull that motherfucker off the wall. He's bugging out. We start pulling out pictures and shit and playing fucking Dilla beats in the motherfucker <laughs> with the fucking, fucking Secret dope. Service agent. Hell yeah. My life is crazy. Hell yeah. It's time to write the motherfucking book. You got her shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. But they were all cool as fuck. Don't get it twisted. They're just doing their job for this right. cocksucker. You know what right. I mean? But fuck Donald Trump. God damn it. Yeah, for sure. In the mouth and the ass. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> Simultaneously. Are there any presidential candidates that you're... We are going to lose again, you know? <laughs> If you think anything otherwise, you're a motherfucking fool. Unless they turn the campaign into like, this is who it is. Don't vote for anybody. Just vote against Donald Trump and vote for this motherfucker. That's the only way we're going to win. Have you seen any of the candidates? Absolutely are, not. Nah. I, nah, I got a good nose. I can You can feel it in the air. Yeah. It just ain't going to happen. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's fucked up. Pumpkinhead, four more years. So let's talk a little bit about your catalog. Word up. From the beginning of uh, of time to 2020. All right. I know some of these viewers, uh, they may or may not know too much about house shoes. So yeah, uh, yeah, go, go, ahead and, go ahead and break it down for them. Oh, man. I mean, from 31, nothing on that shit really ever came out. It makes so was one of my first crews also. We dropped like a cassette single back in the day. I produced them three joints. That was hard. Um, Elzai Out of Focus EP Did like half of that Maybe a little bit more um, You know Proof Dilla uh, Guilty Black Milk I mean a lot of heavy motherfuckers Marv One Danny Brown Quelle Rock Marciano You know what I mean This shit is personal for me I don't do like cold calls Like I make music with people I have personal relationships with. Right. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing to be fucking with the, some of the best motherfuckers in it. That's and then right. as you grow up, the crazy thing is like, you know, becoming a peer to like your OGs and shit. I said some shit on Twitter yesterday. I was like, it's wild when your OGs call you OG. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So. You definitely paid your I'm dues. grateful, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, for some of the viewers that want to find some of your music online or even find you online on social media, uh, go ahead and shoot that out for them. Oh, shit. Twitter, House Shoes. Instagram, House Shoes. Twitter, uh, Street Corner, SCM. That's the label. It's not too active of an account. I can't do all this shit, man. <laughs> I put the records out. Just go buy them, motherfuckers. Instagram, Street Corner, SCM. The hub for, like, the label info shit is streetcornerscm.com. Uh, then we got the mix cloud shit. I do a radio show every week called Magic. It's pretty well, pretty live. You know what I mean? Um, Mixcloud dot com slash house shoes. Soundcloud dot com slash Street Corner Music. Um, Bandcamp Street Corner Music dot Bandcamp dot com. If you want to cop up, uh, you can go to Fat Beats. All my distribution is through Fat Beats. If you go on Fat Beats and select Street Corner Music, you can see the whole catalog of what's available. You know what I mean? Doing the work, bro. Doing the shit for y'all motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Uh, any last shout outs you want to give out before we get into the set? Oh, man. Shout out to House Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to y'all for having me up in this motherfucker. And there you have it. It's Neighborhood Watch Presents for the Record, brought to you by Ill Remedy Studios. We are your hosts. I am Bonnie Blue. And I am Phoenix. We're live in the studio with House Shoes, and we're going to get into a live set right now. Bang, bang.
wish. Make a wish. Count to three. Hold your breath. Count to three. Make a wish. Make a wish. Count to three. Make a wish. Make a wish. Count to three. Make a wish. Make a wish. Oh, oh, oh. 
landscape production. Yeah.